The turn signals on our classic British cars are not operated by magic. They use simple technologies that we already know about. What makes them a challenge for some of us is how they use those known technologies in a blend that's used almost exclusively in turn signals. Now the basics are all there. Any textbook on DC circuits is going to tell us we have to have a source for the electricity, a path for the electricity, a switch for the electricity, and a consumer of the electricity. Well, in our car, the source of our electricity is going to be the car's battery. That's easy. The path for the electricity is a little different because the car's wiring carries power to the consumer and then we use the car's body in most cases as the ground. So it's actually wire and body being used. The switch is also a little different because the turn signal switch in the cockpit is a switch, but the flasher, as we're going to find out in a couple of moments, is a secondary automatic switch and she's also switching. And lastly, the consumer is the light bulb that's going to be flashing and working for us. Now, let's start with the flashers themselves. Flashers come in an array of sizes and kinds. This is plastic, it's round with two terminals. This one's metal, round with three terminals, and it's tall. This one's short and squat and round, made of metal with two terminals. And this one's rectangular with two terminals. And there are many, many, many more. We could fill the table with them. We can take all the flashers that you can get from us at Moss here and divide them into two categories. We have thermal flashers, and electronic flashers. Let's see if we can learn a little bit about these. I'm going to move these out of the way for just a moment. This illustration right here represents a classic thermal flasher. We've got a terminal and a terminal, just like one and two, and you'll notice that between the two terminals there's this arched bridge, and I've done it in two different colors to show you something. This is referred to as a bimetallic spring. And what they do is they take two pieces of dissimilar metal, one has a propensity to want to move a lot when it gets warm and the other one doesn't, and they glue them together like that in an arched form. Now imagine this is in the car. I turn my turn signals on. Electricity goes in one terminal right here, goes across the bridge, and comes out the other terminal and goes to the lights, and the lights are going to do what they need to do. Now as soon as electricity begins to flow across here, what's going to happen is heat is going to be formed. Now you can just imagine as this gets across here, the heat gets really, really fast and what will happen is this piece of metal down below is trying to get straightened out because she wants to expand from the heat, but she can't because of the one on top. The struggle goes on for just a few moments and all of a sudden the one on the bottom wins and when it does is it pushes up and what happens is we get this effect here. A couple of things happen. First of all, when she comes up like that and straightens the metal fast, we get a kind of a bing noise. The other thing is now this bridge that the electricity was going across is straight and it's disconnected at this end. The moment she disconnects, the electricity inside stops flowing because we've lost the connection and this begins to cool very quickly. When she cools, the one on top wins, snaps it back to this shape and makes a kind of a punk noise. So while this is operating, electricity flows and it's broken, flow, broken, flow, broken, and she goes bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong. That's the sound you hear inside your car when you turn your turn signals on. Let's see if we can show it to you. I'm going to take this one here because it's the loudest one of the bunch and I have a 12 volt source of power and I've got a lamp here and we're just going to run power to the lamp so you can see it and there she is, she glows just fine. Okay, now I'm going to take one terminal and put it on here and the other one on here and let's see if our microphone will catch this. Can you hear it? In your mind's eye, can you see this going straight, bent, straight, bent, bink, punk, bink, punk and there's how the lights work. That's what's going on and that's how these work. Now we're going to take a moment and let's see if we can find out what they actually look like inside. I'm going to use this little rectangular one because it's so easy to take apart. And as you can see, there are the two terminals. One goes in, one goes out. And that piece of metal right there is the bimetallic that I was telling you about. I'm going to connect power to one side of it right here and to the other side. You won't hear this because it doesn't have the shell to bounce the sound off of, but you'll see it working. And as we zoom in, you can see right there, see that little piece moving up and down, up and down? That's how she operates. That's how this flasher works. Now these thermal flashers have been around in our industry for decades. They work very, very well. However, they have three shortcomings. The first one is 
If you can imagine your mind's eye, we've got this arched inside here of the flasher where the electricity goes across. If I add another light to this car, or if I try to tow a trailer with this car that has lights on it and they're tied in, more electricity is going to go through here. When more electricity goes through, this is going to get hotter faster. And a big problem for cars with these thermal flashers in them is if they've got another light or they've got a trailer, and you've ever seen one with his brakes on or his turn signals on, you'll see that they're going bing, 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 bing. It's because this is getting hot and cold, hot and cold really fast because of the extra load. The converse is also true. If the car loses one of its bulbs, it will all of a sudden send less current through here, and she will blink slowly. And we've all seen cars say, why is this flasher blinking so slowly? usually means that he's lost a bulb. In some cases, the flasher won't flash at all if they don't get enough current to go through here. And lastly, if you take any kind of a piece of metal and you flex and straighten it, flex and straighten it, flex and straighten it, that metal will eventually fatigue and it will eventually crack. And when that happens, this will stop working. So these all needed to be replaced from time to time. They were just like clutches and brakes and hoses. They all wore out and needed to be taken care of. This is an electronic flasher. This flasher is not counting on the amount of current going through the circuit to operate it. That's taken care of electronically. So because of that, this is usually not subject to having a, a make it go flash faster, for example, if you've got a trailer or an extra light. And it's also not subject if you've lost a lamp in the circuit. This is designed to work irrespective of what's going on outside. So these tend to be a little more reliable, a little more stable than the old models were, but they work just fine. Either way, whether you're talking about an electronic one or an old thermal flasher, they both do the job. They make your lights flash off and on, off and on. Now, another part of the circuit is the switch. And the switches in most of our classic British cars only have three wires in them. They have a wire bringing power in. We have a wire going off to the left side of the car and the right side of the car. Over here, you see your flasher. There she is. Remember her from just a moment ago. So we turn the key on. Power comes in here, travels across the flasher, comes across to here, and comes to a dead stop because the end of the switch is in midair. There's no current flowing because there's no place to go. So even though this has electricity in it, it does not flash because there's no current. There's no heat. Nothing's going to happen. Now let's imagine that I get in the car, and I'm going to use my pocket knife as an illustration, and I'm going to say that we want to turn on our left turn signal lights. So when I do, this is what happens. The arm in here moves up. Now suddenly electricity is coming through the flasher. It's going to get hot, cold, hot, cold, blink, 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 blink. And blinking power runs across here, up here, across here. And the lights on the left side of the car blink, 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 blink. And that's what she does. When we turn the turn signals off, the circuit is broken. There's no flow through here anymore. And what will happen is the lights go out and this stops making its noise. Obviously, if I go to the right, we're going to get the same thing. Suddenly there's power and she's going to blink on the right side of the car. Now, um, there was a time when people thought, okay, I'm driving my car and I don't really know if the turn signals came on or not. A lot of cars, they make a lot of noise and they didn't really know. And people wanted some sort of an indicator on the dashboard to tell them that those flashers are working. So if we look at the old classic British cars, often right in the middle of the dashboard was one light. That one light would come on and blink when the flashers were on. That's why this model from the older cars has a third little terminal on there. We've got the two that you've come to know and one more to go to the dashboard. So this person could put their turn signals on and they'd have one light on the dash, blink, 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 telling them that one of the flashers on the left or the right side of the car was functioning. As time went along, we said, well, I'd like to be able to tell if it's my left or my right in case I forgot to turn it off or on. For that reason, what they would do is, instead of having just one bulb in the middle of the dashboard, on the left side of the dashboard, they would put a bulb. On the right side of the dashboard, they would put another bulb. For the one for the left, they'd run a small lead over into the wiring harness to come out over here and connect to this lead. And for the right, they would connect here. Now what happens? I'm driving along. I put my left turn signal on. Power comes through, flashing power comes out, comes over here, runs up, and the lights on the left side of my car are going off, on, off, on, off, on. At the same time, through this small lead, the light on the left side of the dashboard is blinking right along with them, off, on, off, on. When I turn it off, the lights go out, I go to the right, we know what's going to happen, and the lamp on the right side of the dashboard is going to operate. Okay. This is how these systems work. They're not complicated. So now that you know how it works, in the event that you have a problem with yours, you'll be able to diagnose it and get it fixed and get your car back up and running again.